the first uh, fallacy in Christian philosophy or theology that um, keeps coming up is something that's been repeated over and over again since the second century, and I don't think anybody's bothered to question it, and that's the idea of creation ex nihilo, which is Latin for creation out of nothing, that God created uh, the universe out of nothing. The, um, the idea came from Justin Martyr. Uh, he was arguing with um, some particular pantheistic uh, philosopher, heretic at the time, and Justin Martyr pulled that idea out of his head to uh, avoid any kind of pantheistic interpretations of how God created the universe. Uh, the problem is, first of all, it's not biblical. The Bible says that the things that are seen were made from the things that are unseen. So if you want to use the Latin there, it's creation ex invisio, not ex nihilo. Um, what are the things that are unseen? That's what we need to uh, identify. Um, that's the biblical model, not out of nothing. It doesn't say that. Um, another problem with out of nothing is, th is the inference that God's word which is how God created the universe, um, would be nothing. And I think that's insulting. I think that that, I don't think that it was meant to be insulting, but if you unpack that idea, think about it logically, um, you're actually inferring that God's word is nothing. And I don't think that's um, very um, flattering to God. Um, let's look at what the Bible says about this. I want to do um, some other um talks on cosmology, biblical cosmology as well, but w this is a good place to start because this is um, a myth that has to be um, dispelled before um, we can construct a biblical cosmogony. So at any rate, God's uh, word is what um, is where the universe came from. God's dwelling place, I don't think we would say that's nothing. I don't think that um, we can have an idea of God being um, in a lesser environment than we are. His environment would be greater than ours. I think the idea of God creating out of nothing and trying to avoid a pantheistic model um, can be interpreted as God creating with the universe out of nothing that's in the universe itself in, in that sense that um, the things of the universe cannot explain their own origin. Now I, I can understand that, that makes sense. Um, the first law of thermodynamics gives us that idea that the origins of the universe cannot be explained um, within the universe itself. The origins come from without, but that's not nothing. God's word is not nothing. Um, the Bible um, helps us um, explore those ideas even further um, when Jesus says, for instance, in my Father's house there are many mansions. Jesus also says, um, do not lay up treasures on earth where moth and rust consume, but lay up treasures in heaven. Now, the, the spiritual versus material dichotomy is also not in the Bible. That's another fallacy that I, I can address right now. The economy is that's presented in the Bible is um, spiritual, meaning eternal material, versus temporal material, those things that rust and, um, and are consumed. Those are temporal, but the, the, the contrast the Bible always makes is between temporal material and eternal material. There's no such thing as non-material. Even um, Greg Bonson, the, um, the um, intelligent professor uh, and philosopher, Christian theologian, or I, I guess that's what he would be called, um, makes this mistake. He says that he can, well, he equates spiritual, let's put it this way, he equates spiritual with abstract. And they're two different things altogether. Abstract is just something that um, exists in the world of concepts. It doesn't necessarily have um, 
a corresponding material reality. Although even abstract things, um, abstract words describe some kind of, um, I should say, relationship between material realities. So to try to say that abstract is spiritual is, is bizarre. Or spiritual is the old-fashioned word for supernatural, and supernatural is the old-fashioned word for extra-dimensional. So there are extra-dimensional material realities, and those are the ones that God and, and Jesus exist in. And I guess we could say the the angels and the fallen angels and so forth, they they can exist in that realm and they can exist in ours as well. The Bible speaks of God being unseen and the reason is in his fullness he always has a greater dimensionality than even the angels, for instance. Uh, so even when we are in our glorified states and so forth, um, God will always have greater dimensionality than we will. But I, I believe that um, in, the, in the eternal state, we're going to um, enter into a greater reality, a greater material reality, uh, uh, one of, of, of extra dimensionality. Um, and that's uh, what I want to talk about in one of my other talks um, on biblical cosmo cosmogony and Bibl biblical cosmology um, but this idea of um, spiritual meaning um, abstract uh, is not correct it's, uh, that's totally inaccurate spiritual like I said is the old-fashioned word for supernatural and that's the old-fashioned word for extra dimensional so in the Bible we have things that are unseen extra dimensional realities extra dimensional material things and we have things that are seen and that's meaning seen in this four dimensional world that we live in we can see them of course they reflect a certain wavelength band of wavelength that's why they're that's why they're seen um, they um, the realities in extra dimensions are, are, are not seen by us, not because they don't exist in some way. They're very real. They're even more real. It's just a matter of us eventually getting there. Um, so at any rate, let's get rid of that idea. And if we get rid of uh, creation ex nihilo, we can uh, explore the actual biblical model of how God created. And I want to do that in one of my other talks. So thanks for listening. My I think my next um, talk on um, fallacies in Christian theology and philosophy will be um, a talk on um, presuppositionalism. I'd like to unpack that a little bit because that's another area of a uh, great deal of confusion, I think. So I hope this is helpful to you. Give me some feedback. All right, bye.